Could you please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comments, agenda items only. Any topic related to the agenda may be addressed except for personnel or specific student issues. The school board encourages public participation at its meetings to allow for efficiency in conducting meetings and to give each speaker a fair opportunity to present their views. The following shall apply to the public speaking portion of the agenda. Each speaker shall state their name. Any questions slash concerns be submitted in writing with speaker's contact information, as in name, address, phone number. Each speaker shall be limited to a time, approximately five minutes, which is agreed upon by the board. The board will not permit discussion involving individual personnel or students. Direct all remarks to chair. Community members may not poll individual board members nor debate other community members in attendance. Once again, members of the community are encouraged to attend and speak during public comments. Undue interruption or other interference with the orderly conduct of the Board of Education business will not be allowed. Defamatory or abusive remarks are always out of order. While individuals have the right to email board, um, the board or board members with questions or concerns at any time, the board will not read emails allowed during the public participation portion of the meeting. Thank you. Joel? Oh, yes, uh, special presentation, uh, leaders of the pack. Good, e good evening. My name is Mrs. Samuel, and this is Mr. Darling. I'm here with Anthony Nostrand. Come on closer, come on closer. He's our model fifth grade student who is getting the Leader of the Pack Award today. He consistently demonstrates preparedness. He's eager to learn and challenges himself to always do his best. Anthony perseveres through academic challenges and advocates for himself on a daily basis. Anthony's work habits are exemplary. He is kind, polite, and demonstrates empathy to peers and adults. Just recently, he also received a Husky high five and a certificate for displaying model behavior. So today, I'd like to wish you congratulations. Your teachers are also in the audience. There you go. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. If you'd like. Jump in. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Sir. Thank you. Uh, yes, Thank you. I definitely need to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everybody, so from the middle school we have eighth grader uh, Emma Turner. Um, she's an amazing addition to our school. We really love having her and her teachers all said so many amazing things. I can't read them all, but I will do, take some snippets. Uh, so here we go. So Mrs. Leahy, uh, who's here actually, uh, said Emma shines. Her, uh, she's wise beyond her years. Personally brings everyone around her into her happy orbit. Um, she recognizes the good in every person and genuinely cares about what is best for 
every individual. Emma holds herself to high standards academically and her candor and humility um, about her success makes it easy for her peers to admire her and want to follow her lead. Ms. Picolar said, Emma is, uh, sorry, Emma is that warm cup of tea after a long day out in the snow. Very Ms. Picolar. She is the positive light that can change someone's whole day. Although tranquil and sometimes timid, she's independent, strong-willed, and determined to always do her best. Uh, Miss Jansen, who's also here, said she works hard. She's always respectful of her adults and peers and always has a smile on her face. Emma loves um, all things 80s, which I didn't know. Horror movies and Halloween, um, that just adds to her charm. And then lastly, uh, Mr. Banks said, your determination and resilience in the classroom, this is kind of advice actually, will make you very successful with any endeavor you set um, yourself upon. Emma, always remember, even if times get tough, you are strong, intelligent, thoughtful, and compassionate it young a thoughtful compassionate young lady it was my privilege to be one of your teachers so congratulations well deserved and grandma whoever we got the whole family yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> this is no, special. Be on one. Thank you. I'll take it. You sit. Get in there. No, no. Go ahead. I'll say it. Go for it, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Grandpa. All right, well, who are we facing? You? Okay. Congratulations. You ready? Thank you. Yeah, let me, let me make it Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice job. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does it need any more explanation? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. For the high school, we have Angelina Redner. Uh, her teachers have given a, a long list of amazing accomplishments. Coach Geller says that Angelina is self-motivated, responsible, and dependable here at Highland High School. I've been very fortunate to see her grow into a mature senior. She's definitely deserving to be chosen as leader of the pack. Mr. Miller explains Angelina is a well-rounded young woman with a broad range of interests and involvement in both her school and community. She is a mature and responsible student who has been an incredible asset to our school. No one to, no one to ever settle, she is always looking to go the extra mile and do whatever she can to improve herself in regard to her academics and extracurriculars. Angelina is a highly motivated young woman who strives to find success in all that she does and if it does not come easy for her, she will persevere and work to her desired level of success. In English, Mr. Tatum explained that Angelina is a creative and insightful young woman. She is not afraid to take risks in her work, especially if they lead to a more authentic expression of self. She's kind, empathetic, supportive of her classmates, and she's a blast to just sit and have a conversation with. <laughs> and uh, as a BOCI student, her teacher, Miss Lord, said that Angelina is a talented artist, a committed student, and most importantly, kind to everyone. For no reason, several times, she has baked cookies and brought them to class for all to share. You never brought any for Mrs. Zimmer and I. <laughs> she has a circle of very close friends that she met while here at BOCES and is always thoughtful and kind to all of her peers. Angelina asks engaging questions and always has interesting insight when we critique each other's arts projects. I'm so proud of her. And in speaking with Angelina, Mr. Zimmer and I learned that she is looking to pursue arts education, um, possibly at New Paltz or Hunter or another great school to become an art teacher. So congratulations. That's great. Great job. Yes. And Stanley? Oh, they're all hot. Oh, this one. Yeah, come on, family. Oh, they're good. Fantastic. One thing is, I'm saying she needs better posture. <laughs> and you want to go on the other side? There you go. Very good. 
Oh, I'm fine with the whole thing. Yes, um, at this moment in time, we're going to have a slight change to our agenda. Uh, next up, uh, for the board members, we're going to go to item four in new business, and that's the textbook review middle school presentation. We're going to move it up to this time slot. Okay? Thank you. Nothing like a good old textbook review to clear. <laughs> It'll scare everybody away. Mike's not on on purpose. Off. Oh, there we go. Good evening. Uh, so in front of you, so this is Mrs. Jansen. She's going to be doing most, in, doing most of the talking this evening, um, but she's our seventh and eighth grade math teacher, and she has worked very closely with EdGEMS and with the rest of our math department on this program that we have been piloting for the past year. Um, so in front of you, each of you have a textbook from the company. There are different levels. Um, Mr. Miller, you have the teacher version. Uh, so everyone else has either the sixth, seventh, or eighth grade textbook in front of them. So you guys can review that while we're talking about EdGEMS. <laughs> yes, Mr. Miller has all the answers. <laughs> um, Mrs. Jansen also provided a sample lesson um, that you guys can see an activity that they do in class, and she will go over that in a few minutes so you can kind of see how the lessons translate from online to an activity within the classroom. Uh, I'm just going to briefly go over how we arrived at EdGEMS for our program. So as we know, we are a TSI designated school, and for one of the reasons being our math scores. So over last all of last year, our entire math department got together, and we worked with a math consultant from Ulster Boses. The first thing we worked on was common vocabulary language from 6th, 7th, and 8th grade to make sure it was completely consistent between all grade levels and to make sure that we weren't confusing kids on things that they were learning in 6th grade but didn't know it was the same word or a different word just being taught differently in 7th and 8th grade. After we did that, we developed a rubric <laughs> to assess the programs that were out there. So this took a lot of time to first figure out what it is that we needed as a math department and what we were using as part of the guide for this was the skills that our students were lacking. So we looked at programs that were there to identify, that had programs to help us identify those areas through our subgroups and through our benchmarks and our IXL, which is another program that I talked about last year that we used to help guide our instruction. So once we figured out the rubric and what we are looking for and, I, and what we are really looking for in a math program, we identified 10 programs that we thought may have some of the um, materials, curriculum that we, had, that we had in our rubric. Those 10 math programs we then spent hours <laughs> and hours and hours working on, looking through, talking to reps, and using the rubric and putting in the rubric what areas these programs met, which ones they didn't, and what things we really needed to look at most. Out of that, we, de we decided on three math programs. And from those math programs, we then brought another rep who did, did some training with us last year on those three programs. From there, we chose EdGEMS to do a full pilot, which is what we are in the midst of this year. And from there, I'm going to let Mrs. Jansen take it away. Hello. Okay, so what you see in front of you is on the uh, left-hand side is what students see in Schoology. Schoology is the learning management system that we use in the middle school and I believe also in the high school. Um, and as you can see, it's very colorful and very student-friendly, just the look of it. That was one of the first things that we noticed as teachers. We wanted something that didn't just look like pages out of a textbook. It had to look interesting. Um, on the right-hand side, when students click on one of the 
the units, it opens up and you can see all the lessons. My favorite part about this is that students have access to the entire curriculum from day one of the school year. So if a parent wants to go ahead and wants to enhance their own students learning from home, they have the ability to do that at any time. Um, there, were, there was a lot of stuff that we were looking for as a math department that we didn't find in a typical textbook. And we were able to find a lot of those things in EdGems. And one of them in particular um, you have in front of you, and I'll talk more about in just a minute, and that's the, the activity-based stuff that EdGems offers. Um, can you go to the next one? Thank you. There we go. So what's in a typical lesson? Um, there are unit vocabulary sheets that are filled in, some that are not. So right there we have scaffolding for students that need it. Um, already built in. There are explore activities where before we teach a lesson, students have a, an opportunity to engage prior knowledge. That's something that most textbooks don't really offer in a full lesson. It's more like a quick question. This really gives us a great opportunity to activate all that prior knowledge, all that prior vocabulary. There's built-in differentiated practice. Not only is it already built in, but we can go into any one of those worksheets or assignments and modify them further as we see fit. An amazing thing that we wouldn't find in a typical textbook. Um, it doesn't show it on here. This is actually the student view, but in the teacher view, we also have assessments already available. There's an A assessment and a B assessment, and then there's a tiered A and B assessment for students who may not be ready to take the typical assessment that everyone else is ready for. Again, these materials are already there and created and available for us to use, modify, and implement when we're ready. Um, the online practice is probably the only thing we haven't been able to use, and I think we talked about that a little bit today. That's because we're still in the pilot. So once we go to the full program, I think that will work better for us. Um, right now, it just doesn't work the way we would want it to. But again, it's, I think it's because we're in the pilot program. Um, parent guides and teacher gems I highlighted um, because I want you to see a little bit more of what those look like. And then every lesson has a lesson video already recorded and available for students. So if we have students that miss school or a student who maybe couldn't pay attention during class time and wants to see that instruction over again, it's already there in EdGems for them to go back and watch or their parents to go back and watch if they want to. And yes, I have had parents tell me that they have watched videos with their students. So it does happen. Next. The parent guides are another favorite piece for me. Parents are always asking, how can I support my child at home? And EdGems has one of these parent guides for every single grade level, for every single unit that we do. They highlight how parents can help at home, important vocabulary terms, how math that they should have already learned is going to be used in this unit, and how what they're going to use in this unit is going to be used in later classes or later units in that same year. So really showing why this is important and why they need to learn it. Next. And then my favorite part of EdGems, and the one thing that it offered that we just didn't find in any other program, were activity-based practice. So not just a worksheet for kids to do independently, but activities that encourage and foster collaboration, discussion, discourse. I always say math fights are my favorite fights, um, and we have a lot of them. And it's really important for these kids to do that on a regular basis. Um, I love it when the students can become the teachers and they can work together. Uh, so that's what we see happen with these activities. So the one that I provided for you is called Climb the Ladder. And each Climb the Ladder activity has four um, scaffolded activities with it. Students work together in groups on these activities one piece at a time. So rather than being overwhelmed with a whole bunch of problems, they work on one set at a time. 
they work on them together. This really helps those targeted students that we know need the extra support to just focus on one skill at a time, to just focus on one problem at a time, and to get as much support as they need, whether it's from their teacher who's moving around the room or from their peers at their own table. Once they finish one problem or one sheet of problems, they can come up, they get it checked, and we go, wow, you did a great job with that. You did so great. You're going to get an expert tent. That lets other people in the class know that you know what you're doing, and if they have a question, they can come and talk to you. And as crazy it may sound, these eighth graders love these expert tents. <laughs> they love to brag about them. So it, it was just, it was awesome to see them get excited about not only learning, but helping each other. And which activity are we gonna do today? Oh, why can't we do that one again? It's, it's something that I haven't seen in a long time. So it was really nice. And of course, my favorite part is that this stuff is stuff I already have access to. If I know that I have a unit that's coming up that's really challenging for students, I don't have to just give them a worksheet. I can focus on some activity stuff. If the activities aren't working and they need more focus practice, I can shift gears. And all of this stuff is already available to me on multiple levels. Um, and I think it's really the best service for our students at this time. The oh, yes, thank you. Um, you want to go back two screens? So one of the things on here in the upper right hand corner says student gems and you can't click on it in here because I didn't set it up for that. But when we click on student gems, what's in there are links to outside activities. It links to Khan Academy, it links to, um, I don't know if it links to Castle Learning, but it does link to IXL. And that is another math program that we use. And what I really appreciate about it is that it doesn't just link to IXL as a site, it links to the specific lesson that supports this skill. So for our AIS students, if they're in AIS and the teacher knows what we're working on in class, they can say, okay, let's go into these student gems and figure out which IXL lesson will help support this skill and they can work on it directly from there. Yeah? Any questions? Questions? And is, is this the series you're recommending for grades six, seven, and eight? Yes, EdGems was specifically designed with the middle school student in mind. That was that's one of their claim to fame. Claims to fame is that it's not a program that was designed for elementary school that was then adapted for middle school mm -hmm. or something that was designed for high school and then adapted for middle school. This was designed specifically with middle school students in mind, um, and I believe we are recommending it at this time. That's that's yeah. our recommendation. And a lot of times these a lot of times these series come with additional resources some you pointed out and is that all part of the package yes it's a good. one and you buy every so when you buy the, the price you buy it gets everything so good. everything is linked you don't have to buy anything else any other programs or anything Thank it you. also has an algebra component which was also something we were looking for because we do have algebra one in eighth grade so it it actually extends into that that Mr. Foreman can use as well. A separate advanced curriculum. Yes. Yeah, it also has advanced. a it also has a separate advanced curriculum for sixth and seventh grade. I, I think I don't want to speak to that too much. I know there is an advanced curriculum. Yeah, well let's get the base set and see yeah. where that kind of moves moves us from there. Sounds yeah. good. Are all of your math classes currently participating in this pilot? So about 80% are. We have one math teacher who came late to the, not late to the game, but wasn't hired until after we kind of gone through it all. So there is a teacher in every grade level doing okay. it, yes. Do you She's now been trained and is actually starting to use it in the last month. Okay. Do you find uh, the, the students are using this at home? Are you able to tell that? Uh, I can. From the uh, system? Um, that's a good question. Can I tell if they're logging directly into this? I can tell that they're logging into Schoology and I can see how much their time they're spending there. Most of what we do with this curriculum is in the classroom. Okay. There's not a whole lot at this point that I am sending home for students to do, although that is an option. Um, but a lot of it is that they have to be in school because I want them doing the, the collaborative piece. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of that support comes yep. from. Yep. This sounds really exciting. 
We also use Thank the you. IXL for extra work at home for practice and exercise. Yes. And so the bonus is because we do the IXL at home and, and they're supposed to be doing exercises at home, we notice the areas that maybe they are lacking, which then when you log into this, the teachers are seeing. So it's kind of like trying really in all of our data between the benchmarks, IXL, and then the classwork. We're really beginning to identify those key areas where either a small group or a larger group of students are understanding something and we yeah. can reinforce it with this material, which is really important. There are, another thing that they have, EdGEMS has a lot of built-in formative assessments, just little, I don't wanna call them quizzes, they're checkpoints along the way. Are they getting this skill before we get to a test? Um, there's a lot of that just built in naturally. So it's, it's really, it's great. I love it. Just, just skimming through the, the book, and I know, you know math at this mm. level is a lot of reading comprehension. Yes. You might have touched on it earlier. How do you address those individuals that have lesser reading and comprehension levels as they come through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? Uh, is, is, is there anything in here that's going to pinpoint those deficiencies where you can work on it? For reading specifically? Reading and comprehension, because the math problems are, are a majority of our reading and comprehension. Yes. And if a child can't read to that certain level or comprehend to that certain level, then what are we, how are we addressing that? Are we giving them additional services? How will we address those individuals that are below grade level or are in some type of AI service? So they are certainly getting a service for below reading level. Um, and then the best yeah. part is that if we know a student is below grade level for reading, they're reinforcing that in the classroom and all of the work that goes home, they're going over with them in class first. So in here, they don't have to go through the whole textbook to find what they need, which is great. They can just click on, oh, I'm supposed to be doing the tiered practice. So they don't need to flip to page 25 and read a paragraph. It's already in short form for them in here, okay. which is the bonus of having it. Also, if we purchase the program, we will get a digital textbook. Yeah. So every student, which is the ebook in the bottom left corner, um, which also comes in different languages, which is amazing. And that, that has a read aloud function in it as well. So everything can be done through that. And does this work well on all the student devices that students yes. are using? Yes. So just uh, with the stretcher, just so for a given lesson, so you go through that same order and then you're able to have some flexibility if you need like with more time in certain areas or is it? Absolutely, so they, they do have um, a recommended or a suggested order of activities. Um, even in their suggested order of activities, they don't recommend necessarily doing everything. It's just, hey, this, this is what looks good to us. And then I can look at it as the professional and say, hmm, that doesn't work for me. And I can make kind of my own idea of what I want. Um, the proficient, the tiered, and the challenge practice is one thing in particular. I wouldn't do all three of those as three separate pieces. I may offer them all in the same class period and say, hey, this is, what, this is the skill that we're practicing. If you're struggling with this, maybe you were absent for a few days or the reading is too hard, that tiered practice is just a little bit of a lower level, but the same skill. The proficient practice is right where everybody should be. And then the challenge practice truly is a challenge practice for the students who understand the skill and need to go a little bit beyond so those students who we typically have a hard time servicing because they're ready for more and we don't always know how much more to do for them this offers a great challenge um, still scaffolded but challenge practice for them and then the IATEL is more for the foundational skills that are it can be for foundational but it can also push them beyond um, I believe it goes up to ninth grade math the IXL so they they kind of will top out on that eventually um, but I haven't seen that yet in the as far as you so that's being used at home exclusively IXL or not it, exclusively that's, no it, it's an option to use it at home but we do use it in school as well okay, that's one of um, just kids that are you know be behind you know just kind of make sure they kind of get those early yes. skills that are missing so IXL, IXL is used a lot in AIS math to help support those those lower skills for sure. Thank you. Yes. I see you looking at the answers, Mr. Bukat. I did provide you with the answer key, yes. Yes. I got that one right. One of them was pretty tough, gang, so. Uh, but I nailed it. Good. Um, Megan, how, um, when did you start looking at this series? We started the pilot for this in September. 
You did. Yes, and if we look, took <coughs> all of last year with looking at multiple programs. We first worked on vocabulary with the consultant from BOSI, because mm -hmm. um, that's really important and we know that's important. And then we moved from that into um, coming up with things that we knew as a math department based on our PSI, like the targeted areas we knew we needed to improve upon. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we made a rubric, and then we stuck with that rubric. Yeah and really went on to all the different programs that we had learned about and went through them and Karen helped us and she spoke to, I can't count how many districts to see which ones they were using and we looked at all of them and tried to see, all right, where does this help us? Where are the areas that we know we need to be able to support our students and what program can we find that's gonna meet those needs? Because we knew that was most important right. for us. So there, there was a, did you have like a short list of series to look at and then we start, this yeah. one? I mean, the yeah. ones we put into the rubric where there was 10 different programs. Okay. We, we kept whittling it down mm -hmm. a little bit at a time. So it was, it was almost a, like about a year it took yes. you really? Yes, it, yep, it took a whole a year. Of, okay. Wow. And that was after meeting with the reps and consultants and teachers from each the brought down to three. We met with those as a team. We met with them and we asked them. We looked at their programs. They gave us a you know quick trial. We could log in. We could see. We found things we may not have liked or didn't mm -hmm. understand. We asked questions. We had Zoom meetings with them, um, and even just the willingness to work with us and figure out what we needed. They got to name. What did you guys name? They named the kids named the voice of Ed Gems. <laughs> and so they really are like, Betty. Yeah, responds immediately and wants to do whatever they need to help us yeah. in a trial. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So Thank you. all of this seems awesome, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems really exciting, especially for you guys as educators as well as the, the students. Sure. Um, what challenges have you seen? Have you seen any, what areas, is there anything lacking? We know in, in the real world, nothing's perfect, right? So what are some of the challenges, just to understand kind of what you've seen? Um, the online, well, the quiz piece doesn't give yeah. us names, so that's why we haven't been using it. Okay. It gives a dash, so that yeah. would be a great tool that once we purchase the program, then that Hopefully those that names will be away. built in to the program differently for us to be able, so when they do like a quiz or a checkpoint, that'd be one more set of data, one more set of assessments that we would have to say, okay, that 30 minute lesson, I need to go back and reteach because it seems like, you know, 20% of my kids aren't getting it or, so that's one piece that would be valuable for us. Okay. Um, and then the yeah. ebook, but I think those are also just things that we don't get yet. Okay. Um, and that would be awesome for, anyone at home really right. and then the read aloud piece that would come with that is phenomenal yeah. okay. also awesome. kind of a good problem to have that there's so much yeah. available here that i just kind of said well that's not working so let me just try to do everything else right. um so it, it it didn't end up being as big of a hindrance as i thought it would not having that yet but i think now that i have everything else down once that's available it'll be a great support I know in the beginning, Carol spent oh, countless hours working with a them lot. with school and yeah. um, getting all of our kids' names and through class rosters. But So that was a huge yeah. hurdle in the beginning. It was but, great tech support. They offered great support. Yeah, excellent. And that's so, always good to hear. Yeah. And they're <laughs> they're yeah. very responsive. That's if good. we send an, an email or a, a text message at this point, um, they they respond with within the same day. Sure. So it, it's excellent. Great job. So I'd say yeah. that was the biggest hurdle was linking to Schoology probably, and we knew right. we needed that. That was the one of the major reasons why we were most interested in this program was because it was going to be something the kids didn't have to relearn. They could yeah. log into Schoology and the app the app would be right there for them to get into, which is huge for us. A lot of the programs that we looked at didn't weren't Schoology friendly, and this was one of the two or three that, that was, um, which was a big driving driving piece of that. Makes it a lot easier. Yes. It's all one thing. It's yeah. one thing they know. Yep. So ideally, um, a student, this is book two in the series, right? So that would align with seventh, seventh grade, grade traditionally. Yep. Book one in the series, uh, would that pick up, um, and Mr. Darling, um, on what the students are leaving the elementary school knowing? Yes. Will it transition? So Megan and I, uh, she talked a little bit about you know how they kind of were led to Ed Gems, um, primarily because of its connection with Schoology, which is something that we don't necessarily use as much at the elementary school. Um, so we've been talking about just that connection between the program that we're looking at and the programs that we were investigating that, we'll, that I'll present at some point to make sure that there isn't a disconnect between 
where our students are leaving off in fifth grade and where they're picking up in sixth grade. So, um, and we don't we don't have any concerns about that at this time. Continuity is is the key. Yes. The bonus is that Mr. Tranter, who is the policies consultant, works in both of our buildings with both of our teams. So okay. he's going to be a huge person that we're both going to be able to utilize in. He's going to know both math programs, and he's going to make sure that there's consistency between the two programs, especially with vocabulary, because we know that's most important when it comes to what words they're hearing in elementary school and the same words they're hearing in middle school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. As part of the TSI plan, we're allotted money. Um, and as Megan mentioned, this process started a long time ago. So over the summer, when we were looking at this, we identified that you know having a consistent program uh, for each of the buildings was one of our biggest targets that we needed. Um, so we allotted money in our TSI grants for, just for that purpose. Um, so you know the program that we would be purchasing uh, would be done through that TSI grant money. Thank you. Thank you. Nice work. <laughs> okay, uh, now we're at um, curriculum and instruction. Principal's monthly reports. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Good to see you again, and hope you had a good holiday with your families. Um, so I wanted to start off with something that was in the board report, but just wanted to spend a few extra minutes on it, which is the PBIS assembly that we had had on Friday, April 8th, the day before the students went on break. Uh, so that was something that we had uh, premiered, if you remember the BARC video here, a few months ago, um, and we had been meaning to get it out to students as soon as we could bring them all together. And uh, so we had two grade levels at a time come in. We did a full assembly around, you know, a reminder of what BARC was that they had learned about in their classroom um, on a couple of occasions at this point. And then we premiered the video for the students, um, which they really enjoyed. You know, you could hear a pin drop in the, uh, in, the, in the gymnasium, which was nice. You know, we treated it like a movie premiere. Um, and then after that, we, we introduced this new idea called the Husky High Five. You know, so we've done a lot of positive reinforcement with paw prints that students receive for positive behaviors. We just included uh, a, certif a certificate that uh, Anthony Nostrand um, actually received. You know during that last week as well. But recognition, for just you know, an additional step of recognition for students uh, in front of their peers where they were called up during the assembly, received a certificate, uh, and got a high five from Hudson, our Husky. So uh, I think I included some pictures for you in the report, but it was a really positive event. You know, we're looking forward to doing lots more of those whole group recognition events um, now that we can do that type of thing again. You know, and also including attendance, um, you know, recognizing students for positive attendance or growth in attendance and some of those things that you would typically see in a PBIS assembly. Uh, so just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Aside from the board report, uh, I just wanted to update you that we did have our picture day yesterday uh, with Upstate Images. That was the second time that they came to us this year um, and it was very successful. No no you know issues whatsoever um, so they've been great to work with they're also coming back friday to do a fifth grade uh, whole grade level photo as well as a staff photo so we're excited about that uh, we we did have our state test for ela uh, at about two weeks ago three weeks ago now and that went that went very smoothly i'd like to thank mr freer for the systems that he put in place and kind of shared with me um, because i could just watch him over the last you know really last year uh, and kept basically everything the same the teachers are very familiar with how the process works um, and so you know that can be a very stressful time for teachers and kids and i felt like having a, a smooth system helps alleviate some of that um, anxiety we did end up with about 19 percent opting out um, which is which is great in my opinion you know some years i've seen have gone have been around 40 ish percent in the height of the opt-out movement um, so i'm hopeful that this gives us a, a more um, realistic if you will baseline of where our students are at coming out of covid and something that we can build off of 
over the next number of years on these state tests. Uh, I'd like to publicly thank Harriet Meyer from the high school. She's been the district liaison for the direct committee, um, and she had done an activity at the high school uh, I believe a few months ago with teachers where they it was a reflection a curriculum refle reflection and uh, you know we were interested in having her do it with elementary school teachers and she came down during our faculty meeting yesterday and just went through that with them about uh, primarily about social emotional learning and some bullet points on what teachers are currently doing in their classroom and brainstorming ideas about how they can you know some ideas that they can uh, include whether it's in the classroom or what we could do in the building uh, and that came from the the uh, new york state framework for culturally responsive sustaining education so just wanted to thank her and uh, last but not least over the last few days we have had some some parties like classroom parties outdoors um, you know and we are getting back to scheduling those field trips and things that you know I know were brought up at previous uh, previous board meetings so just wanted to publicly recognize you know teachers for quickly putting those things together because really that's been a, a change over just the last few months and they've spent a lot of time trying to engage parents in finding ways to bring them into the school community that, that we've so looked forward to doing uh, as well as scheduling field trips you know in short notice um, so we're excited about the next few months leading up to th you know bigger traditional events like our moving up ceremony any questions just thank you to you and your staff for bringing things back to normalcy um, it's been a couple of years and uh, that's good thank you thank you thank you Thank you all. Hello again. Okay, um, just a few additions. Miss Ozzy emailed me today to let me know that the art department is doing a district-wide art show at the Highland Library, and she's featuring, um, this is on May 7th, and it goes for the entire month of May, and she will be featuring 25 works of art from our uh, advanced art class, which is pretty awesome, and we are very excited to have that artwork being posted in the Highland Library. This is for the district, so there are other art teachers who are doing this within the district as well, but I just want to let you know to stop by the Highland Library in the month of May to see that. Uh, another really exciting thing is the Walk for Ukraine that I've been talking about with our sixth grade. Their first goal was $1,000. They are now up to $2,600 that they've raised. And this afternoon I learned we just received a $500 check from a local gas station. Who, um, so that, I don't know the gas station yet, so when I do I'll make sure to publicly thank them as well. Um, but a parent dropped that off this afternoon, which is even more exciting. And then I know Maggie is going to bring up um, something her PTA is doing, but so she's going to pass out a flyer when she does that. And that's all I have. Any questions? Megan, what was your percentage of opt-outs for your testing? 29%. Um, so it was a bit higher, but I think what's going to happen is from the elementary school, our sixth grade had the lowest amount of opt-outs. So I believe as the years progress, there is going to be less and less students who are opting out. So our numbers in seventh and eighth grade, our eighth grade had the highest amount of opt-outs, which is pretty typical anyway, but I think that group is still part of um, the group that was more interested in opting out. So I think as years go on and we get more of the elementary school students, they will be more invested or will be taking the state test. So we still have a few more years before we have yep. awesome numbers, but we're getting there. Yep. Great job on the fundraising. That's Thanks. Well, that's all the sixth grade, Miss Carla. She's very good all job. over it. She's very excited for Friday. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I have three addition to, additions to the high school principal's report. First, I'd like to share with you that our high school STEM teacher, Adam Iannazzoni, participated in the Boston Marathon this past Monday. Not only did Mr. Iannazzoni run in the marathon, but he finished in two hours and 51 minutes. And he was in school yesterday. He was limping a little bit, but he was hurting a little bit, but he, he did well. Uh, congratulations to Mr. I on this impressive accomplishment. Also, congratulations to our chemistry teacher, Christopher Scro. He has been chosen as the recipient of the Excellence in High School Teaching Award presented by the Mid-Hudson Section of the American Chemical Society. Mr. Scro will be presented with the award at the section's April event called the Undergraduate Research Symposium, which will be held 
on Friday, April 29th in Newburgh. Kudos to Mr. Scrow on receiving this admirable recognition. Finally, today, the Highland High School Model UN Club hosted a successful mini-conference and invited New Paltz High School's club. It was here in the auditorium. The creative topic, uh, the creative topic uh, was created and voted by our students. It was this. Uh, the topic was a global mythological take on genetics. Deities, demigods, heroes, and creatures met to discuss the ethics of humans using the DNA gifted to humanity to make scientific and technological advances. Yeah, it's a mouthful. <laughs> Students used the Model UN protocols to conduct the conference on this relevant topic while having researched their character and role-playing their perspective. Highland, stu Highland student officers worked very hard to organize and chair today's event. Thanks to advisor Stephanie Santagata and our student Model UN members. Uh, I know Maggie was there and she might mention it when she reports out later. And that's all I have for you this evening. Bill, I just say uh, thanks, Stephanie Santagata, for doing that. She came to us early in the year and said, as soon as we could get kids into the building from another district, we'd like to do that. So this was a long time coming, and so please thank her on our behalf. I certainly will. And I will there were about her 25 students from New Paltz High School who that was That's awesome. Yeah, and their advisors, of course. I want to tell you, I went to the Freaky Friday show. And Isn't it wonderful? the song, I've Got This, played in my head for two <laughs> days. Okay, just want to let you know. They did a great job. Yes, it was. It was fun. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zimmer. Uh, director's monthly reports. Does anybody um, from reading the reports have a question for a particular director? Huh? All good? Thank you for showing up, just in case. <laughs> okay, um, we are now t at the consent agenda part of our agenda and uh, I'm looking at a1 through d3 does anybody at this moment in time have a question on any of them Camille Heather now still open Okay, we all agree on A1 through D3. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Sue? Second. Camille? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, nobody opposed. Okay. Six, zero. Thank you. So we'd like to acknowledge that uh, Mr. Zimmer is in the audience this evening and he's just been approved to be the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. Congratulations, Bill. We look forward to working with you for many years to come. Old business. No, I'm sorry, I skipped over a page. Sorry about that. Student rep. Student rep. How are you, Maggie? Hello, everyone. Um, so, starting with the elementary school, like Mr. Darling mentioned, the elementary school is really embracing some of the fresh air with outdoor play and festivities, and today the second grade and kindergarten spend a lot of time outside. In addition, officers from the Town of Lloyd's Police Department came by this afternoon to play a quick game of kickball with Ms. Fasano's fourth grade class. At the middle school, the uh, bike program is restarting this week. And now that the weather is nice, they're very excited to get that going again. Students ride bikes around campus during PE class and it gives students who otherwise do not have access to bikes the ability to learn how to ride and gain confidence in their ability. 
um, my brother was in the middle school last year and he always talked about how he loved that so I know that's a big thing for middle schoolers and the HMS PTA is going to be doing spirit wear fundraiser that will end on May 2nd I'll pass around that form And then for the high school, as Mr. Zimmer mentioned, the High School Model UN hosted our third conference of the year with our, our second conference working with the New Paltz High School. Uh, Dimitri Bacatius, Ali Fuller, Ria Shinoi, and I were running this and the previous con conference and could really see big improvements in the kids' public speaking and debating skills. Uh, this Friday, the GSA will be participating in the GLSEN Day of Silence, which is a national student-led demonstration where LGBTQ plus students and allies all around the country and the world take a vow of silence to protest the harmful effects of harassment and discrimination of LD LGBTQ plus people in schools. So that's going to be a very important um, event this Friday. And there will also be a college fair next Thursday at the high school from 9.30 to 11 a.m. for students to attend. And finally, World Language Night is next Friday, April 29th at 6 p.m. here in the cafeteria. The Spanish and French classes have been working really hard on this event, and we know it'll be a great night. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Pupil Personnel, Dr. Boyd. Hi, everyone. Um, as you can see from my report, uh, we've had a very busy month of meetings, uh, 117 meetings over uh, in a month with spring break built in. Um, so it's been a extremely busy time of the year. We're starting to slow down on some of those meetings um, and we're moving into a lot of our preschool meetings uh, and then eventually our transitioning meetings. Um, one of the things I just want to highlight, thank you to our um, staff across all buildings um, as we have students that transition buildings uh, sometimes we have them do uh, a day of what the, their program might look like for the following year um, you know there's some hesitation obviously as they transition buildings for some of these students that are nervous about that um, so all the buildings have been very accommodating for that uh, for students spending a day of what it might look like um, and sometimes they buddy them with other students that they might know to help them uh, navigate that so just to ensure that uh, the students are comfortable with their upcoming program and the parents as well um, Mr. Darling uh, and Ms. Coburn mentioned state testing. I want to thank them as well. Uh, state testing is available to homeschool students. Um, I'll be honest with you, we very rarely have homeschool students uh, take us up on that. Um, at that opportunity, uh, we did have a few this year, um, which can be very intimidating for a student who is homeschooled to go into a building that they may have never stepped in um, or haven't been in in a while. Um, so they were very helpful to those parents who were a little nervous as well, bringing them in um, and working them through those those days of them coming in for the test to, to make sure that they feel comfortable um, and put them in a good position. Um, so thank you to them for being so accommodating. Um, we're at a point in the year, uh, you know, finishing up annual reviews, third quarter uh, progress reports will be going out next week, uh, third quarter homeschool reports are coming in, so it's a busy time as we look at students, how they've done. Uh, this is a pretty important time of the year where students that we try to really ensure that they continue to be engaged um, and that we're looking at their progress to make sure that uh, we make this last quarter as meaningful as possible for them. Uh, so sometimes it's some extra conversations from our teachers. Um, with families and with students uh, to keep that motivation going, especially coming back off of spring break. So thank you to all those teachers and staff members for having those conversations. Um, tonight you approved um, a renewal for our contract uh, for MAGBO. Um, they've been absolutely phenomenal to work with, so thank you for that. Um, they've been a great partner with us uh, in... Um, working together through those Medicaid uh, hurdles that we that we do to get some of that funding uh, recouped from that so uh, just you know thank you to them and thank you uh, to you guys for uh, proving that that we continue to work with them thank you um, 
other than that, uh, you know, we're coming up on kindergarten screening and, you know, that's the time for us to take a look at some of our incoming kindergarten students and then it's going to be some outside visits to some of the preschools as well uh, to make sure that we are prepared as much as possible for our incoming uh, students come September. It was interesting about the homeschool students taking the test. Um, did the parents uh, comment why they they wanted it to do it since it's so unusual? Or um, I I think um, we've had an increase in homeschool. So some of the students that are currently being homeschooled are students that. Um, would not have been in the past, you know, mm -hmm. coming off the pandemic. So there are students that uh, parents would have had them take them had they been in school. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if it's a student that's, you know, homeschooled K-12, um, they don't engage in some of that uh, in some of that testing. Um, but I know that the parents that did choose to do it um, were very eager to talk about how they did. They wanted the results right away. <laughs> oh, my you goodness. Know, unfortunately, wow. it's going to be a while. Um, you know, we, don't, we don't get them for quite a while, so sorry. We, we can't yeah. tell you right now. Um, but um, And some of them just want to make sure, I think, that the work that they're doing at home, that they're on par. Good for them. Yeah. yeah. How many homeschool do we have now? Uh, 55 currently. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah, and typical in past years, um, it always hovered around the high twenties. Mm, yeah. Wow. Good. Okay. So, uh, as a reminder, we have the spring gala this Saturday night at Novellas, where we'll be honoring. Uh, Lenny Ockmoody, Patty Steffens, and Peter Miller. There are tickets still available. If anyone is interested and has not already gotten a ticket, please uh, reach out to either Carly in my office or Luke on the flyers that have been posted around the community. Um, two items uh, to support Zach Ousterhout and his family. Uh, the Rotary will be hosting a spaghetti dinner this Saturday, sorry, sorry Sunday night. Uh, it's actually afternoon and evening, uh, the 24th. Um, I know I sent this flyer out to all the board, but uh, there are plenty of uh, dinners still available. I was at Rotary <coughs> this morning. Oh my goodness, it's only this morning. I feel like it was yesterday. It's been a long day. I was at Rotary this morning and they said that uh, they would like to sell 200 dinners and they're right now at about 180. So if you have not already signed up to do that, I know the deadline has passed, but they are still taking uh, folks and uh, there will be some walk-ins that day. They didn't think that was going to be the case in the beginning, but um, please take advantage of that. Also, we will be hosting in conjunction with the Ousterhout family, a blood drive here at the high school on May 14th. I want to thank uh, Mr. Murphy. He's been the go-to on that, helping the Ousterhout family organize that, so thank you. Uh, our next direct meeting is this coming Tuesday. As you know, last month's got canceled due to uh, various reasons, but mo mainly that we had folks that were ill. Um, it will be this coming Tuesday, the 26th at 6 p.m., and if all goes well, I think we are back in person, according to my calendar. So um, please come out for that. It would be in the library. That would be great to see you. On May 6th, I know I spoke a little bit about this uh, last month, but uh, we talked more about it today in our cabinet meeting. Uh, we have a, a tech day, or at least a portion of the day, dedicated to technology. Uh, there are webinars that are through NiceGate. Uh, I know I mentioned that we were one of the uh, areas of the state that were uh, granted uh, access to uh, the grant that they applied for. So our teachers have opportunities to take part in webinars around technology and they can get CTLE hours for that. So we are asking that all teachers participate in at least one webinar. The, the shortest one is about three hours and then they could use uh, other time that day to work as grade levels and departments. We will also have kindergarten screening that day so those teachers would not actually be taking part in the nice gate uh, opportunity, but NiceGate is, uh, those webinars are open uh, for weeks uh, 
into the into the coming months so um, you know they can do it during grade level meetings and they can also do it on their own time for those that need CTLE hours this is a great opportunity for them to uh, to do that and they can do it at any hour of the day I know I'm a broken record on this next one but we have lots of COVID at home tests please stop by any building pick them up from the security vestibule uh, our, our folks are there to hand them out they're in the health offices they're in my office and I want them all out of my office as soon as possible so please do not buy at-home tests. We have plenty to feed the community, uh, and uh, we want you to take us up on that. The we did turn off the we were able to turn off the valve on that, so no more tests will be delivered unless we get into a spot where we need them again, and then we can turn it back on. But we asked them to shut that down. Uh, some exciting news, uh, as you know, we. Um, we have our capital improvement project scheduled for October of 2022. Uh, during the spring recess last week, I came in and Mr. Miller and I went around with uh, CS Arch, our architect firm. We got pictures of all of the areas that are part of the base project and the Proposition 2. Uh, it started out as a rainy day, but midday the sun came out and we got a really great uh, drone footage uh, of the backfield. So that will all be part of a video that CS Arch will be uh, providing for us to help to, to uh, get this information out to uh, the community. That's just one of the things that they'll be doing, but they'll also be making those poster boards for us once our plans are uh, drawn up in a more formalized manner. Uh, one of the things that they had as an option that was part of the project and built into what we have already contracted for was a save the date postcard. So uh, some of the just quick information about when the vote is, where to get more information, that type of thing. We will have those postcards go out right after the um, the regular budget vote. The budget <coughs> vote is on October, or sorry, May 17th. Uh, our regular budget vote and then we will get those postcards out we thought about sending them out in advance but we didn't want to confuse people with two sets of literature at the same time so um, we will get some save the date postcards out uh, in May interviewing um, we have completed interviews today for a French position for next year uh, we're hoping to have that finalized and for the board's approval at the next meeting and some possibilities within the next week to get finalized uh, would be a library media specialist for the middle school and high school, an APE teacher and TA uh, re leave replacement for the elementary school, and the tech director we hope to have to the board in the next, uh, in the next coming week. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the night before spring break, the high school had the rock concert I missed it because I was at BOCES that evening, but BOCES was equally uh, fun and entertaining and we got to see what those programs at BOCES afforded our students. Uh, it was just an incredible evening, uh, but I heard great things about this and I know there's video. I know I sent that video out of uh, at least Mr. Zimmer doing some kind of a little dance. I know I sent that out to the board, but I think I can I can sell it to anyone who'd like to have a copy. <laughs> he did bust a move. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Zimmer, for participating in that with the music teachers and our students. Uh, that seemed like it was a great evening and it had rave reviews. Um, at the request of the board, uh, I have scheduled BOCES uh, to be here on May 3rd to give a presentation on the PTEC program. So we will have that going on. And then one final thing, Mr. Zimmer and I will be attending the Marist Teacher Education Advisory Board panel tomorrow evening. Um, that's something that happens on a regular basis and we're excited to go there and talk about the things that we'd like to see teacher education programs uh, do for our local schools in the coming year. So it's always a nice evening to, to get our opinions out there. So any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Board of Education, new business, BOCES administrative budget vote. B 
Be it resolved that the Board of Education, upon a recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, approves the Ulster County Board of Cooperative Educational Services Administrative Budget in the amount of $6,650,577. Can I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Uh, Sue and Heather. Um, any discussion? Mike, I saw you had your hand up for... Okay. Oh, no, I was okay. just getting the mic ready. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 6-0. Thank you. Uh, item number two, BOCES ballot for election. Be resolved that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, recommends the election of the following candidates to serve on the Board of Cooperative Educational Services. Seat number one, New Paltz, three-year term, David Thompson, 76 Rocky Road, New Paltz, New York, 12561. Seat number two, Rondout Valley, three-year term, Brian Martin, 3338 Main Street, Stone Ridge, New York, 12428. Seat number three, which is an at-large position, three-year term, Barbara Carroll, 678 Old Post Road, New Pulse, New York, 12561. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. So, second. Mike, second. Um, questions on any of these candidates? Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 6 0. Thank you. Number three, polling service agreement. Highland Central School District and Ulster County Board of Elections. Be it resolved that the Board of Education, based upon the superintendent, approves the attached polling service agreement between Highland Central School District and the Ulster County Board of Elections for the annual meeting, which is to take place on May 17th, 2022. Motion? Move it. Al and Sue. Uh, any questions? No, but that probably meant to say upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools. Uh, yes, I, exactly. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No? Six zero. Okay. Uh, number five, BOCES invoice discussion. Um, as reading this, I'm, I don't, I'm really not obligated to read it at this point. Dollar bill. I don't know why we we don't need to discuss it, do we? No. I want to pay both. So. Do we want to pay both of them now? You want a card? We should stick oh. with your dollars. If, if that's sorry, I should. If it's been paid for the year prior in the past, you should stick with that um, trend. And that's for, is that for like school boards, membership? Ulster County School Board. Ulster, yeah. right. Oh. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we want to pay from this year's budget uh, or next year's budget? This year's. What would you, this year's, okay, recommended. Thank you. You can always go to the right person for that. Whatever Victoria wants. Thanks. Right, so that says 22-23. That's for the service. We'd like to pay for 22-23. I got you. Okay, thank right. you. Okay, old business. Um, public hearing application for ballot. Public hearing to take place May 3rd at 6 p.m. for the annual budget vote and election. This hearing will take place at the high school cafeteria prior to open meeting of the Board of Education. Application for ballot. Please note that for this upcoming school vote only, voters who do not wish to appear at the polling place for fear of contracting or spreading COVID can check off temporary illness or physical disability on the application for a ballot. The request for application must be received by the district clerk no later than May 10th if to be mailed. Otherwise, personally delivered 
to the clerk no later than May 16th, day prior vote to vote. Application for ballots as well as for military are available on the district's webpage. Capital project updates. Just a comment there. I, you know, when deadlines say like the day, it's always good to have what's the end of the business day on those types of notices. So what's the time deadline on May 16th that someone could potentially walk something in? 3 p.m.? 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Okay, thank you. By yeah. talking about it here right. in this yeah. meeting, that makes it a matter of public record. Right. Uh, thank you for picking up on that, Mike. Any more questions about that? Okay. Um, capital project updates. Cool. The only update I had was the uh, that I met with CS Arch last week, and uh, the pictures have been taken, and they are starting to work on the promotional materials, the preliminary materials. Uh, Pete, do you have anything um, you need to update us on? Okay. Thank you. No, I mean, we we adopted those resolutions at the last meeting, right? So everything is where they yeah, need no, to be. We met our time frame. All right, thanks. All good. Miscellaneous, any uh, correspondence, any board members received that we want to mention? No? Public comment. Okay. Um, if there's just, something else, I have one thing I just forgot to say before. Um, so the Future Medical Professionals Club is holding an event at the Highland Firehouse on May 1st. And basically what we're going to do is have um, caregivers drop off the people that they're caring for and all of us are going to like play bingo, go on walks with them, uh, arts and crafts, things like that. And we're just looking for elderly people to come. So I was wondering if you guys know anyone? And <laughs> hey, 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 are you saying something? <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, if you know anyone. Um, I have the, the poster, so I can, can you email it out to everyone? Okay. What was the name of the group again? Um, it's Future Medical Professionals Club. That's at our school, but we are partnered with Ulster County Office of the Aging and Jewish Family Services. Okay, and what time on May 1st? Yeah, I'll, I'll send Ms. Niglia the poster and then she'll send it to you. What time was, what time was it again on May 1st? Um, it's going to be at 12.30 to 3.30. Thank you. And you know what I'm going to say? Stop at the office and take a box I was, of COVID I, I tests. I wrote that. I swear I wrote that down. Because that will, I'm sure that will take a lot. And once you take them, you can't give them back. <laughs> okay. You can take them to college with you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any of the board members have anything for the good and welfare of the um, district at this moment in time? Happy spring, everybody. Thank you. I think it's fine. All right, motion to adjourn. Motion. So, Second. Camille, thank you. Good job.